Yeah, buddy. It's been a while since y'all done took this ride with the coach. LDBC, LDMMAC, this is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the coach show, the coach show, live. And that's right. Yeah, buddy, that's right. Look, man, as much as I really love going in on Dana White, I love going in on Dana White. I like going in on that Whisker Biscuit ball headed PG-13 channel. I love doing that. But I got to tell y'all, man, I got to tell y'all, Dana White has done the impossible. Okay, he's, he's done the impossible. This man, okay, did this funny-looking, troll-looking-ass dude, he's, he's managed to put fights on in the worst pandemic of this decade. Okay, like, he, he's managed to do it. You know, I don't know, like, and I think boxing, and I think, you know, all these other organizations, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, I, I think they're going to have to follow Dana uh, White's lead if they want to get stuff back in operations. You know, boxing, they're already throwing stuff around about, you know, like having, like, uh, you know, fights with no fans at it and all this kind of stuff. So Dana White did it. I mean, man, I didn't think he'd be able to pull it off because, you know, guys, at the end of the day, we have a, it's a pandemic going on. It's a straight up pandemic. And unfortunately for him and his fighters, they're really at risk. Because, you know, some of them, you know, they got to travel from afar, and that means you got to get on an airplane. That means you got to go to an airport. That means that probably somebody's probably going to be infected. And that means that more than likely, you know, as a fighter or anybody coming to that location where the fight is, they've got a higher chance of actually spreading the disease. And, you know, now they're having these fights over in Jacksonville, Florida. And let me tell you, these people down in Florida, man, they out there had a damn black party, a block, not a black party, a block party. They had a block party. Like I'm talking about, it was a it was a like a beach full of people, and you know these people they don't care about spreading the virus down there in Florida. So I'm sitting there thinking, man, and, and I guess Florida is the only state crazy enough to be like, yep, yep, let's let them fight, let's go on and open it up, let's make it happen. I mean, it is what it is, it is what it is. But you know, I feel bad for the fighters. See, the fighters they lose because you know if they get sick, well, I mean they get sick, they don't be able to fight for a while. And really, they putting themselves in danger. They putting their lives in danger, really. Because the COVID-19 virus, you know, unfortunately, is, is nothing to play with. And, you know, Dana White got them signing this crazy contract. And the contract is stating that, you know, they can't say nothing about the UFC's protocol on how to deal with this. They, they can't say anything. And, I, and I'm sitting back and I'm like, dang. So even if somebody gets sick, if they happen to get sick, they can't talk about the protocol. And then there's a chance that these people, they won't be able to recover their purse. They won't be able to get it. I said, dang. So it's like the fighters, they're going to sign it because they have to take the chance. They're going to sign that because they need money. Guys, most of the fighters that you see on TV, a lot of these fighters, they live and fight to fight. They live paycheck to paycheck. And did you know a lot of these fighters, they're poor? They're very, very poor. They're living like they're living at poverty. They're living at poverty or below poverty. And I'm talking about Bellator, UFC, one championship. You, you got like your top half of the roster that they can comfortably be fighters and live on what they make. But then you got the other half. They can't, they can't live on that. They can't live on that because, you know, their expenses are so high. And it's just like taxes and training fees and that stuff eat up everything they make. So it's almost like, you know, they have to fight. So the fighters that, that what the fighters are gonna do, they're gonna be like, yeah, you know, I don't have a choice. I gotta fight, and they're gonna take whatever deal thrown at them. I mean, you, I mean, you heard you heard Kamaru Usman over there buck dancing and 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 Cowtown and all this other mess, trying to beg Dana White for a fight. These fighters, they they'll do what they gotta do. And that means even signing a bad deal. And I'm thinking, man, are any of these fighters managers looking at this? But maybe everybody just desperate. Everybody desperate for a fight. Everybody, everybody want to make make that paper. I know these lower tier fighters, man, they all over social media and they begging. They literally begging for fights. They literally begging for them. And it's like, OK, but I still got to ask the five million dollar question. I, I, I got to sit back and I got to ask this question. If these fighters, what if they so happen to come down with the coronavirus? Like what would happen if they if they happen to come down with it? What would they do? Because you, you can't fight for a while. And, you know, <laughs> The way this thing been attacking people, you really, truly don't know. You don't know what could actually happen. I mean, the person might not even survive. And that's real talk. 
I mean, we ain't, we haven't had a fight or death yet from, from the coronavirus, but, you know, I don't put anything past this coronavirus. And I feel like Dana White, I, I feel like what he's doing is that he's taking this lightly. And he'll tell you, no, I'm not taking it lightly. But, you know, deep down, I, I feel like Dana White is taking this virus lightly. Like, I think he think that, oh, well, you know, more people are getting killed by the flu. <laughs> it's just, a, you know, I think Dana White is, is of that mindset. And I think he believed that. I literally think that Dana White believed that he got and he's bigger than anything. And what his desires are more important than, you know, health and safety. So I don't know. I just think that's who he is. And I think that's how he operate. Um, Dana, I can't say I, Dana don't really care much for the fighters. OK, it's like a win win. It's a win win situation. You do something for him. He do something for you. Guys like Dana White, they're not. They're not in the business of doing favors and good deeds. They just don't do it. If a guy like Dana White, you know, donate money to a charity, he's going to get a write-off in the end. If a guy like Dana White give you $100, trust me, there's something that you're going to have to do for him to actually earn that $100. He ain't going to just give you $100. That's not how rich people think. Rich people don't just give away their money, okay? They don't do it, okay? They got to get something in return, and they got to they gotta really get it in return in order for them to give up any kind of money. And Dana White ain't that kind of guy. He's just not the kind of guy. He don't, guys like him, he don't have a conscience. Dana White don't have a conscience, man. He's just the guy that, you know, he cares about his bottom line money. And I can't fault him for that. I can't fault him for caring about his bottom line. But however, man, I think the contract, though, with these fighters, man, I, <laughs> man, I, I think that contract is, is just, I think it's terrible. I think it's terrible. Because what happens? I mean, you know, you got Jacques Ray Souza. I mean, he actually, I think he's still trying to get his purse that he never got to get because, he, you know, had a coronavirus. But you know what, though? I, I'm going to retract that. I'm going to retract that because Jacques Ray Souza told the UFC, and this is what I'm making a retraction. He told them that, you know, he had been around people that had the virus. So I, I guess from the UFC standpoint, maybe I can understand why they won't pay him. Okay. But if it's somebody who's there, and they ain't been around nobody. They've been doing the best they can to quarantine themselves. And then they up and just, you know, get the coronavirus. Well, I think that person deserves to get paid. Okay, I think they do. But I don't know, man. In the UFC, y'all going to start seeing, man, them jokers, they finna get tight on the money. Because, you know, Dana White said he ain't expecting to make a gate for about a year. So, you know, you can't get no gate money. That's a, that's a big chunk of money gone. And he talking about he ain't going to lay nobody off. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. I, I think Dana White. We'll, we'll do it when push come to shove. He'll do it. Okay? He'll do it. I don't know, man. But this whole thing, man, this whole thing, it just it just oozes just stupidity. It just oozes stupidity. And I'm like, damn, what is it with all these bald head guys? What, what is it with the bald head guys? What is it with these guys? It's almost like they lose their hair and then they lose their damn good common sense and they lose their damn mind. Damn, boy. Well, at least we know one thing. MMA is back. And boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, y'all going to take a back seat. Because Dana White has separated himself. You know, he separated himself, you know, from, from boxing. He, he's done it. And see, Dana White, now one thing I do agree with it, Dana White said times have changed. Okay? He said times have changed. And he said, we're going to have to learn how to do business in this sort of environment. And Dana said the first person that can, you know, that can do business in this sort of environment, he said they're going to prosper. I do. I completely agree 1,000% with that. But it's also how you do it. 